me tell you about an amazing story that illustrates how we're helping animals and people, puppies and newborns, in ways that have never been done before. We're using technology that brings in stem cells, regenerative medicine, human health, animal health, and this story really helps illustrate to me how we can help society in so many ways and how we can help by this collaboration that's deep and meaningful between the medical school and the veterinary school and emerging science and technology. So spina bifida is a disorder where the spine does not fully form and a child or an animal is born with inability to walk and usually incontinent. The Spina Bifida Project uses whole cells to treat both dogs and people with spina bifida. So it used to be that if a patient was diagnosed with spina bifida, we could only offer to repair it after the baby was born. We started researching what is spina bifida, what does it mean, and we learned that Toby potentially could be disabled and um, not be able to move his limbs from the waist down. So they have many issues and, um, and they require a lot of medical attention and multiple visits. I developed an interest in spina bifida and dogs and cats with spina bifida early on because we had no treatments for that disease those animals would end up being euthanized. This was in the era of uh, cell therapy. It was just beginning. I had done previous work on cell therapy for cancer. So it made me ask the question, if we added stem cells to the developing spinal cord, could we improve that function? The stem cells are quite different and they're smart. You can engineer the stem cells for different purposes, for different applications. We discovered that bulldogs are often born with a spina bifida-like lesion. So dogs are living in the environment just like we do, and they, they develop lots of problems in a similar way. And we're finding out just how similar they are to diseases that humans get. So we thought, wow, why don't we test our stem cells in these baby bulldogs? Which a lot of people would look at and say, why are we doing neurosurgery in dogs with spina bifida, especially when there's so many dogs? That is the reason. He uh, was selected for a study from UC Davis at uh, stem cell transplant surgery. What we notice is that even after birth, adding these stem cells seemed to improve the function. So that gave us further confidence that these stem cells really could make a difference. And they said it's like, the first type of stem cell treatment for spina bifida, you've got to give them a call. So we are actually quite excited about the possibility that these stem cells really do make a difference. So Tomo was my pandemic rescue dog. As you can tell from her running, she's very mobile despite the spina bifida. I definitely see the value of clinical trials and the hope that it can give to people. The moment he was born, his toes were wiggling and legs were kicking and that was a miracle because we didn't know if it worked you know we didn't know what would happen uh we've been following up with the uh, author all the time i think he's doing very well compared to what he looked like in the beginning he's one of our heroes for sure and he currently gets around pretty well he's my wife he's uh, he's my dog it's been great to take care of her and to watch her reach her full potential. I think she certainly has. I absolutely feel like they rescued me to some extent. Toby being able to walk is a big miracle. And now he's just walking all over the place. And he loves to say, I walking, I walking. It's significant that we can look at a disease that had absolutely no treatment 20 years ago and now maybe we have something to offer. I'm convinced that if humans had to walk at birth the way our four-legged friends do, someone would have uh, cured this disease years ago. And I think that by studying both species, each species can learn from the other. I think this place offers something that very few other places can offer. It is UC Davis fostering team science. This is very important. There's no place better than UC Davis to 
uh, solve the really important questions that are facing humanity and our planet. Today we've been able to see the story of Arthur and Tomo and Toby. This really came home to me when I was able to meet a nurse from the, the medical school at an event. When she would see kids coming back to visit her after they were born with spina bifida, they would always show up in wheelchairs and they would be that way for life. And just recently, she had Toby come visit her and at 18 months, he came up and ran to her and gave her a big hug. And she looked at Toby and she looked at the parents and she realized how impactful this work had made Toby's life, the parents, but then as we also think about the puppies and the clients and the animals that are also affected. So this is just one of thousands of diseases that animals and people share. And as we think about the fact that we're in our 75th anniversary and our future, this is just the beginning and you haven't seen anything yet.